ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mic Drop Podcast. Yes, sir. From the former Let's Keep It a Buck member who got fired. Yes, go oh. ahead and dig <laughs> you, you got you got fired. And that's what that's what Dre always says in the spaces. Yo, you got fired, bro, on your birthday. I'm like, they, uh, nigga, they fired you on your birthday? It's crazy. B Souls didn't know. I don't blame me them. personally. <laughs> I can never take that level of disrespect. Man. Facts, man. I got tough skin. I'm not sure. It's okay. Uh, follow us on those social media uh, links. Will be down below. We got a special guest in the building. Big holla, holla at crazy. Say what's up to the people, my guy. What's good? How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all having me on this show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, King, how you doing? How you doing? Man, I'm doing good, bro. Let's get into it. Big holla. Big. Why do they call you Big holla? Let bro, me, it's, it. it's actually funny because I used to go by uh, crazy. But, yeah. Uh, my cousin... He made like a Twitter call, Holla Killer, because he was killer. I was crazy. Right. And then I ran with that. And then once I started YouTube and, and like Xbox, everybody used to call me Holla. Like mm. they didn't read the crazy part. They would just be like, yo, Holla, uh, they ain't building <laughs> such and such. People yeah. call, started calling me Holla. So when I started YouTube, uh, somebody was like, yo, what's good, Big Holla, Big Holla? And it just stuck. So I, mm. I changed it. Okay. okay. How'd you get into, uh, get into YouTube and all that? Bro, I used to watch Ali A and was like, yo, I could do this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I just started. Then I just like kept learning over time until I was able to like make a career out of it. Mm, okay. Where'd you, um, let's start from the beginning. So what, where'd you go to school? What got you into content creation? Uh, did you play any sports growing up? Just give us like a quick rundown of like who you right. are and whatnot. My first YouTube channel is out there somewhere. I've always been, like, in front of the camera, like, my whole life. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, back when I played sports, uh, I played baseball, basketball, football, soccer year-round. Mm -hmm. So, had no free time. Um, I started rapping. I got into battle rap. Uh, oh, but shit. Then, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did battle rap. And then um, I really like the politics behind, like, the company so i just got on like the business side and with mm. that i started getting around more people who were creating and mm. i i actually used to do um vine with my homie trez and she loved michi like they used to call me michi would get like uh you work with michi yeah we all went to the same oh, high school shit. he literally like lived like in the house behind oh you in atlanta right yeah okay, okay so when vine was popping they would hit him up and be like yo uh, we need you to do a a ad for this this mobile game. Mm -hmm. So Trez will call me. I'll go over Trez's house, write out like what the thing was gonna be, and then they will shoot the vine. And then he'll drop it. So that's mm -hmm. how I really got into content creation with Vine. Okay, okay. Yeah. How'd you? Uh, when was the first time you met uh, my counterpart, Omizi? What was the, what was, the <laughs> what was the first time uh, you met him? That was uh, at an A and P football video that never came out. Well, actually, I met mm. him at, at LA Fitness. I just don't remember meeting him. Mm. He was at LA Fitness one time. I was there. I just don't remember. But officially, was that AMP did like a tackle football game? Boy, <laughs> it never came out because something happened with the. Well, I don't know what happened. But... <laughs> the footage, the, the footage got lost or something. No, I, I don't. I don't know what happened to the footage, but. That's the first time I met him. He was like doing the equipment boy, I think something like that. What is it <laughs> like? Uh, what is it like working with the uh, AMP? It's cool. Like I think they're very talented people. Like right. I think they are very. You never understand like the work ethic that go into things until you see it like in person. Mm, like they're they are um, effortlessly content creators. So mm. they just do stuff. It's content. Omar was kind of there to like bring structure to the video. But I think it's I think it's good. Now you're gonna be there for way longer than you expect it, but yeah. I heard I heard him like one time in his face, he was talking he was complaining about the time that he had to spend and like the countless like video calls he had to do to kind of yeah. like get everyone organized and shit. So mm -hmm. I definitely respect him for that, you know. So even though he's a he's a little munchkin, five two munchkin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um but talk about a little bit more about the content that you make. Uh, you make like reaction, shit. yeah. So, okay. I um, I started out gaming trying to figure that out, and one time 
like a year in, I made like a reaction video to an Eminem video. I dropped it, left my house, and I'm like on the way to like a place I was like 30 minutes away. And um, when I got there, it's like at 60K. I'm like, wait a minute. Wow. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then I did music reactions for a minute. Um, but I didn't want to do that forever. Then Versus came. Mm. And I was, was like, ran, I, I was raffling PS5s off. So I made like, I was able to get a second PC, a lot of other stuff in the motion. So like, then I switched over to more like secular reactions, like the gaming and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, now that I know what I want to do, I'm about to create another channel that's not even going to have my face on it. And uh, you want to talk about that? Serious. You said what? I said, do you want to talk about that? Um, It's going to be a... Like a your race type of deal? No, 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 no. Like, it's going to be a... It's not going to be a critique page. It's going to be more like it's going to be a commentary, more like Legend of Winning, but like. In a different oh, okay. Yeah, so like, I'm like, 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 is it like a you can be commentating on like what well, like social issues? Like, is it like? Oh no, no, like, no, no, no. like a play entertainment. I don't even like doing like. Okay, so, so it's not going to be like on some playback or album preach shit. Like, mm -mm. it's going to be more on like um, trying to see without giving it away. Um. I, I like low is the only person I can think of him okay. in basketball. I'm gonna just do that in a different department. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, okay. That's dope. That's dope. You ever okay. thought about getting into like Twitch or like live streaming? I live stream every day. Oh, okay. So you already do that? Yeah. Okay. You live stream on like, YouTube or Twitch? I stream on both. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's cool. So like, um, I just use Streamlabs and ports it to both of them. Talk about like that uh, that battle rap shit because I didn't know you were a battle rapper. That's yeah. one thing I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> like, Talk about how uh, that went. You said the politics kind of strayed you away from that. What kind of what strayed you away from it? Um, there's a lot of like big homie politics or like I put in money for this event, so I'm a battle this person uh, type of thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it really started. Um, <clears throat> I was at high school and we used to they. I was like, a, I switched high schools because they wanted me to come play basketball at this other school. So I went there. Um, then they had this cypher. Nobody nobody knew I could rap. Some people kind of knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do the cypher. And in that cypher, I had a line where I said something about people from New York. But I was speaking, if you listen to it, I was speaking <laughs> about one person in particular. Yeah. But all the people from New York took offense to They me. was like, yeah, it sounded yeah. like a group diss. <laughs> <laughs> so like we had a second cypher and in the second cypher apparently like everybody was dissing me but like i was just rapping i didn't i didn't think about it mm. and then and then so i left and then everybody was like yo he's ducking he ran i'm like i was right there y'all didn't say nothing yeah. like so then yeah. we set up a battle rap like we actual me versus one of the dudes from new york and it was like literally everybody at my school from new york versus me like we rap battled outside. The police came, broke it up. I had another battle uh, at school. And then my homie Trez, he ended up battling on URL. Uh, okay. That's a, that's a look. We started, yeah. We started with Spit That Heat in Atlanta. So he calls me and he's like, yo, I know you're the only person who could like do this battle rap stuff that takes stuff seriously. Come do it with me. So I really only started it to like be there to support him. Mm -hmm. I did like, like maybe like five or six battles. And I was like, I'm gonna just get on the business side of it because mm. people be emo ba listen, y'all think like <laughs> content creators are emotional. Boy, battle, battle rappers, rappers Jesus yeah. Christ. You literally get them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine. And I literally had um I interviewed a battle rapper, I think I forgot where he was from, but he uh he does oh, like you talking about Kid Kenzie? Yeah, Kid Kenzie. Yeah, Kid Kenzie, yeah. And okay. he does like um like anime type bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And the kind of backlash he gets because of it, 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 like they keep on saying it's corny because of it and whatnot. Yeah, it's not really the traditional way like battle rappers would do it. But um, I don't know. I've, I've always been interested in the battle rap shit and the politics because I feel like me as a casual, I don't know too much about battle rap. I only really know mm -hmm. like the bigger ones, like Daylight and uh -huh. Conceited, you know what Conceited, and all. And I can kind of see where it. the politics comes in, especially for mm -hmm. like niggas that aren't as established. Oh yeah, for and sure. niggas that aren't as rich. Like, how do you make money off of like battle rapping, really? So you can make money off the venue if you got enough people who can have a draw. Uh, if you can get like a venue that you could like 
put your own bar. You can run it that way. Or right. like if you can fill a venue and split the door and bar with the, the venue, you can mm-hmm. make it that way. Um, you can make money just wearing a shirt. Like if somebody wanted to be like, hey, yo, $500, you wear my shirt on stage. Mm. You can make money that like way. Like a brand? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Brand deals. The battlers get paid depending on how big their draw is. There's pay-per-view, YouTube views, um, just sponsorships. Like, so we did one with, uh, it was at Julio Jones restaurant that he has in Atlanta. So mm-hmm. we did a battle there and people paid to like put a backdrop in there. So it was stuff like that. Yeah. You can make a lot of, there's a lot of bread. In there. Mm-hmm. Who are some of your like favorite battle rappers? Um, I would say top three. I think they like the best like puncher to me, mm-hmm. like um sue surf i think is the best battle rapper and uh damn you think he's like my new up and yeah i think he the best okay i think he he be like he be playing with people yeah like (laughs) what you think think about king los or do you you consider him a a battle battler i mean king los is a good rapper not a good battler though okay there's there's like a lot of like uh things to battle rap that is aside from just rapping. What do you think about uh what do you think about dumbfounded? Uh I only heard dumbfounded versus uh conceited. I really be in like on, on black culture, like okay. uh okay, mm-hmm. let me let me yeah, I, I really be on, like <laughs> bring out that like, Atlanta. Go ahead. That, that's really it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I feel like because I, I feel like there's a lot of subgenres within battle rap or like little sure. like like groups or clicks or whatever that's like you know mm-hmm. yeah. really like dumbfounded and like some of like the other leagues, they do like a little bit more like funnier commentary. It's more entertaining. Okay. But like when I hear stuff, I want to think like, yo, how did he come up with that? I don't want to mm. be entertained. I want to think like, yo, that was fire. So it's all preference at the end of the day. I feel yeah. you. So yeah, I'm a casual, so I don't really know much about battle rap. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I'm not gonna sit here and act like yeah, I'm God. <laughs> I am a casual. But, yeah. um, y'all come to Atlanta, I could get y'all in a battle event though for sure. So okay, nice. you still yeah. battle rap? Nah, I just um so John John the Don he has a league in Atlanta called Bullpen. That's who I work with now though. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. All right, talk about like the YouTube channel because I saw you got reposted by uh Dwayne Johnson. Oh yeah, facts. How did the uh, how did that, what? How did, so the first just, person I, I got reposted you. by though is Will Smith. What? Like, Wait. Will Smith put me in his YouTube <laughs> video. Like yeah, when was this? 2019, I think. Like this, oh, okay. no, okay. December 2018. One of the mm. one of them years. But Will Smith posted me. Then uh, Jesse Reyes posted me. Mm. Machine Gun Kelly posted me. But The Rock was he dropped the video a song with uh, Tech Nine, and at the end he uh like pours like you could hear like the audio of him pouring liquor. So you said I was The Rock like, dropped a song with Tech Nine. Yeah, yeah. When was it? <laughs> yeah, I was, saying, when was, I was like, did I hear that right? Did yeah, I, I, I think it was Yo. like back in April. Yeah, I it was go, earlier. I it was way earlier this show. year, maybe like February, or something like that. But uh, so in the at the end of the song, you can hear him pour liquor, and The Rock owns Terramana. So I was like, "Yo, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Terramana, fuck that Casamigos, blah blah blah." And you know <laughs> so he posted that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which okay. Was, that was good. Yeah. Shit, how did that how did that make you feel, bro? That's that's pretty big. Hey, You're pretty I'm, humble for a nigga. Hey, I post my <laughs> shit. That shit going on every platform, <laughs> TikTok, nigga. I'm on every I'm on Pinterest with it, nigga. What? Bro, I just be crazy. appreciative of stuff like that that people because I think he has the third biggest Instagram account on the Instagram. Mm-hmm, so right. like I was like, yo, that's lit. I try not to get too like and let it you can let it get your head yeah, get it. I buy yeah. am appreciative of all of that stuff though for sure because that's what helped that's how I got 10k on Instagram. So mm-hmm. I would I think I went from like seven point something to like 10k in okay. like a day. Yeah. Do you have like two YouTube channels? I have I got a podcast channel, I got mm. my music reaction channel, my big holler channel. Don't those are the three that I use. Mm-hmm. How long have you been uh podcasting for? Like six months. Six months. Okay. Mm, yeah. Is it like a solo podcast, or you do it with like? Other uh, I do. I podcast with people, so it's like um, I do interviews with. It's called the People of Atlanta. So mm-hmm. I interview like I, Omar was on there, uh, Avery B was on there, Snipe. I, well, I didn't drop his episode yet, but Snipe was on there. Okay. Um, 
just people in Atlanta that I know, because like I be outside in Atlanta and I be trying to like yeah take the internet views that I have or my Translated. use of the internet and put light on like other people's stuff too. So mm-hmm. mm-hmm. translate it to to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Um okay, okay, okay. Um shit, what was I gonna ask? I'm drawing a blank. What you said so you have like uh the podcast and then you have like the big hollow one. Mm-hmm. And is that and one my, like a, re- a reaction channel? Like what? Yeah, I, I do reactions and gaming on there, so I, I like play like scary games and stuff like that. Mm. I also do like reactions to like Tear Zoo, um, Corey Kenshin, That's like cool. just everything. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what are your thoughts on mm-hmm. Aubrey Drake Graham? Oh my god. I and think, be honest. No, no, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I think like mm-hmm. uh, that man's the greatest. I ain't gonna lie. In my opinion, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Like, from, like yeah. my perspective of like what it is to be a leader of like your section. I think he's the ideal version of it because he take the heat for a lot of stuff. He put a lot of people on. The ghostwriting allegation, he changing people's lives by me taking your verse and me rapping it and you having writing credits on it. You will have enough money to feed generations of your family. So, like, people look at it like it's not all about the talent. He showed us the talent when he 5 a.m. in Toronto. We see the talent. There's a reason before we all knew him, he was at Dr. Dre writing for Dr. Dre. There's a reason for that, mm-hmm. right? He just is in a point where, like, look, everybody about to get rich. Everybody around me gonna get rich. I respect it. So, and that's the part that niggas do not talk about. Really, the fact that he puts niggas on still at the height yeah. that he's gotten to still puts mm-hmm. niggas on. Fact. That's respectable because not a lot of niggas would do that shit. So, bro, um, he made Black Boy JB hit of the summer, bro. What are we talking about? He made Smiley like. <laughs> Like yeah. Smiley is ass. You wanted, I got it. That you nigga know? Smiley. <laughs> Smiley had no business being what? famous, bro. Like, That's what I'm like Smiley, oh, I seen a tweet no... that was like, "Oh, I don't know what dirt Smiley got on Drake." <laughs> he got something, bro. And I, think hey, I listen to, to Smiley, OVO. bro. He he be snapping sometimes. Yeah, and I think he signed the OVO too. So that I man. Yeah. Wait, so is Drake your record. so so Drake's your favorite artist? I'm assuming, right? Uh, fake. I wouldn't say fake. I think he's my favorite artist. It's between him and Lil Wayne, but uh, like who I think the best artist is Kanye West. It's Lupe Fiasco. It gotta be, bro. It gotta be Lupe, Lupe. Fiasco. <laughs> Explain it as an Atlanta nigga. Please tell me why Lupe Fiasco is the greatest rapper. The things that Lupe Fiasco talk about, he just like how I said. I want to think like Lupe Fiasco make music that if they had like a a loof like the art museum mm-hmm. in, in in Europe, if they had like a music museum, he will be like the number one person talking about like our current culture, like in America, I think. Like the stuff he explained is just like, he say things and like five years later, I learned about it and I was like, yo, I was listening to his music and he said that. Like his new album, Drill Music in Zion, mm-hmm. that's what, listen, all, all the Kendrick stands, <laughs> What Kendrick tried to do with his album, that's what Lupe did. Mm. Lupe did it in three days. <laughs> that's oh great. What do you have to say about that, King? That's King a terrible okay. <laughs> you, you a Kendrick fan? I'm a Kendrick fan, but I, I'm mostly a Kanye West fan. You feel me? Mm. That's why I was too. trying to see what, what's your opinion on Kanye. Oh, Kanye. Kanye is another one. I think, like, okay. Lupe, message-wise, should belong in a museum. Mm-hmm. Like, Kanye, art-wise, like, Entertainment wise, he makes the best like aging music. I think mm-hmm. that's Anybody what I was saying because I feel like the case you made for Lupe, it, 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 if I feel like it fits more with Kanye, with what Kanye's done and what he's doing currently. Like, yeah, this man's been making music since '04, and it's like nothing but straight classics. And but see, I um, think like like um, the difference is I think Kanye's is more like what's a a cult classic movie. Like Kanye's is like the Titanic, right? Mm -hmm. Impactful movie. Everybody knows it. Everybody gets the scenes. Like Lupe music is like Fight Club. You watch it. You're like, all right, it's a good movie. But then you start (laughs) to learn more and more about it. And you're like, okay, okay, I I can see that. that. 
Okay. What exactly about Lupe, like out of all artists though, like that is so like thought provoking and so unique <laughs> compared? I, I'm just I'm just asking because I, I respect yeah. it as because mm-hmm. he's a great lyricist, he's a great storyteller. So I'm not taking anything away from him, but yeah. Why Lupe exactly? Like, what about him and his content? Does he talk about that's so much more different than everyone that's came out before him? Is my question. Or even after. Uh, him. Well, mainly because yeah. I grew up in this era, though. <laughs> I grew up in like the like Little Wayne Fifty Cent was like the beginning of me being able to like pick my own music. Mm-hmm. Like so, shortly after that came Lupe, Drake. You know, what I'm saying all of those people. Mm-hmm. So back then, like just hearing. What was the first album I heard of his? He had Kick Push. I was like, all right. I didn't, yeah. that, that wasn't what I liked though. Okay. When I went to his album, he had like, um, uh, I really like that movie that movie one album there. called Lasers. I think that's what it's called. Lasers is good. Lasers I like is lasers. good. Yeah. Lasers you don't like is lasers? Like worst album to me. Yeah. That's his worst album to me. That's how my hits though. <laughs> what? That's so backwards, bro. <laughs> what makes that, okay. What makes but see, that it has worse? hits though, but like, I don't, I didn't. Oh, I don't feel okay. like I learned much. Like, well, I'm a casual. I'm a casual Lupe fan, so like for me, that's okay, yeah. yeah. I, I would but say like I he did too. the cool hip hop yeah. save my life, Intruder Alert. Like, um, that that is a flawless album. The cool, the die, hello goodbye. I like, like the just cool. the concepts that he rap about is like, mm-hmm. uh, it's crazy. So, who who are your top five rappers right now and all time? I know it's loaded, so I'll let you give me some yeah. time to think. You know, so I think all time it would have to be <coughs> damn. Yeah. Like it would have to be Drake, Lupe, Lil Wayne is there. Uh and the other two, Eminem, will have to be there. Mm, okay. And the fifth one. Eminem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um I wanna put <coughs> I want to. I'll put Cole. I'll put Cole right now. I. I would oh, have right to now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I will put that in my all-time top five. I know there's probably people I listened to earlier, but I just can't think. Like, you didn't put Lil Wayne in there. Yeah, Lil Wayne, Drake, Lupe, J Cole, um, Eminem will be the five. What about what about Jay Z? Why don't you have Jay Z in your top five? Jay Jay Z mm. is like a. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, haven't, I, haven't explored, I haven't explored his catalog. I'm not the I'm biggest Jay Z fan I'm either, but yeah. like if you told me to name five songs off a of reasonable doubt, I couldn't do it. Like I haven't, I just wasn't exposed yeah. to his catalog. Yeah, growing up. yeah. That, that's understandable. He's fire. Though. His his like his mm-hmm. uh features immaculate. His messages are immaculate too. Mm-hmm. I just haven't explored his catalog yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I see that. Okay, why why is uh Eminem in your top five? Because I think like even his like messaging and music, like the like he was in a culture where he was judged by how he looked before his talent. Mm-hmm. And I grew up in a place where that happened to me, right? So it was like the opposite spectrum from what like he went through, he was in black culture. Yeah, as a white dude, that was immensely talented. Mm-hmm. I went to like a school predominantly like you know at my at when I was younger, like the schools I went to was like predominantly white, but I was smarter mm-hmm. than everybody. But everybody treated me like I was dumber than everybody. Yeah, because I was black. Yeah. Like they literally kept me out of advanced classes till fifth grade. They had to build another school and me go there and be fresh for them to put me into advanced classes. Damn. So, yeah, that's crazy. So I um, that resonated like that. You know what I'm saying? That chip on the shoulder, like, dang, I, I'm going. Th- I'm in the same situation as y'all. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? My my dad not here neither. Like my dad, yeah. look, I'm, like, so that's yeah. real. That's real. So that's why. I was um, sure. So so that was right. So that was all time. So who is your top five? Like right now? Right now, Mozzie number one for sure. All right. I fuck with Mozzie. Uh, I like that. Okay. okay. Mozzie number one. Lil Dirt. Mm. Dave. Jesus, bro. Dave. Niggas listen to UK music? That's crazy. Boy, what? I, I, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that, that one caught me off guard a little bit. I'm not going to I like Dave, though. I'm, yeah. not, I'm just saying. If I asked Domo that shit, he would not say Dave. 
for, tripping. Yeah, so <laughs> so Dave Mozzie, um, who else did I say? Dave Mozzie, Lil Dirt, oh, Lil Dirt. Uh-huh. Um, you like Lil Baby? I don't like listening to Lil Baby on my free time. <gasps> You're from Atlanta. I'm gonna play <laughs> Lil Baby in a function, criminal. But like, I don't like. I can't believe this. <laughs> I don't. Alexa, play Lil Baby in a minute. Like, I don't do that. Like, in a minute, I'll play. But like, I don't. Yeah. Okay. I'll fuck with his message though. He run in Atlanta. I'll give him it. Um, who the other two though? Let me look at my phone. Bro. Is Drake the only person that's in your all time in right now? Uh, probably. Well, then good. I'll put Drake and J Cole in them too. Okay. But uh, I'm trying to give like newer artists. Pooh Shiesty. Mm. I like Pooh Shiesty. For sure. Yeah. Free that man. Pooh Shiesty's cool. Pooh Shiesty's cool. And uh, Merkles. Mm. Max. What do you say? Merkums. He's from uh, Arizona. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shout out to him. Shit. Shout out to Arizona too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like the versatility. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Arizona, Atlanta, Cali, Chicago, all over the place. I like UK. It. Yeah, UK. Yeah, that shit is okay. Okay, I think um, Dave is like the number one person in my Apple Music though. Like when you bring the thing up, it's like thirty hours a day. Bro. Dave, like, really, really, that's crazy. Yeah. Who, what are some other? Uh, what are some other artists from the UK that you listen to? Uh, Stormzy is tough. Oh yeah, Stormzy, Stormzy. is tough. I fuck, I, like Stormzy. I fuck with Stormzy. Um, I like Stormzy. Chip is tough. Uh, Avellino is tough. Wretch is tough. You like Central C? Yeah, I was gonna say I Central, heard C. Central C. He he had that one song that went like big on TikTok about what well, um, can I be homophobic? Yeah, my, my bitches. Is- oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that nigga. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he just actually he just did a music video with a uh, lyrical lemonade too. So for real, uh-huh. yeah, but, uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, now he's blowing up for real. He is. Yeah. Uh, Jay Huss is is tough. Um, I think I've heard of that name, Jay Huss. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of UK like artists that I listen to like on the slide, but Dave is the one like when Dave drop, I'm yeah. listening to it. Sure. Mm. Dave is hard. <laughs> what do you listen to Afro beats much? Uh I don't know like who I'm listening to, but like mm. I be around a lot of like that culture. So like mm-hmm. when I go to their functions, they be playing it. But um I don't know the artists, so you don't even know the artist's name. Mm. That's crazy. <laughs> no. That's a that's a Damo take right there. Oh god. <laughs> I don't know their name, but it's hard. <laughs> you usually it'd be like girls that I like that that are on the ox when they play that, and I don't just be like still in their whole playlist. But mm. yeah, okay. okay, okay. Okay, what what do you uh what do you have planned for the future as far as like YouTube creation, content creation, music, just everything in general? What do you got planned for the future, bro? Uh, I think now that I have the direction in YouTube I want to go, I'm about to move in like a month and just work. Uh, being that it will be a channel that don't have my face on it, like mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about people like, "Yo, I seen your video." I don't want to run into that. <laughs> um, are you gonna? Are you I'm gonna, gonna just like, run that up. Are you gonna go, go crazy with the edits since your your face is not in? Oh there? yeah, yeah, yeah. The edits about okay. that because I am okay. I like editing, but I think like. I moved to this crib because I wanted it to be a creator crib, but then I moved and realized everybody wasn't on the same wave as me. Yeah. So I'm going to just focus on like my stuff. Mm. Go find a girlfriend or something, you know what I'm saying? Travel the world type shit. Okay. So you single ready to mingle. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. yes. Facts. <laughs> where, can the, uh, where can the viewers find you on social media, bro? Uh, Big Holla, or you can just type in Holla at Crazy and you'll find me on anything. Facts. All right, holla at crazy, you know what I'm saying? Nice to have you on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, y'all know the podcast already? I mean, shit, you any, got anything else you want to ask? <laughs> Bro, we, we can, we can <laughs> just chat. Up. Like, we can <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, shit. Uh, Meg Thee Stallion's dropping. What do you think about Meg Thee Stallion and the Tory Lane uh, situation? <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> we don't know the truth, you know what I'm saying? So I just kind of stay out of it until the truth is revealed. Me personally, I'm it's like, answer. even even when Meg the Stallion, apparently, I, I remember there was like a freestyle, right? Where she's on mm-hmm. the roof and she's like, y'all, y'all know what freestyle I'm talking about? It was before she got popping to everybody else. I no. think I, I remember the one that she did in the car. I remember that uh, one. It's like, there's like a cypher and she's on the roof rapping. I remember like the girl who I was dating at the time showed me, I was like, not yeah, good, no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw like, a crazy ass tweet. They were like, "Oh, Meg Thee Stallion's bringing back freestyling 
Um, she's making it popular for rap- for female rappers to freestyle. Bro, I-, I respect I- her grind though. I just personally, I don't think she's like like her her music doesn't appeal that much to me. I mean, even with her grind, like most of the most of the like main female artists, like Nicki, mm-hmm. she she grinded the same way. She was dropping yeah. mixtapes, freestyling. Like, but I see, think... I would actually listen to a Nicki song. I would actually listen to like a Cardi song. I'm not. I I don't think I don't have one like Meg Thee Stallion song in my phone unless she featured. Mm. So, I really like uh, speaking of like women f- uh, female freestylers. Lotto actually did a really good free song. Fuck, fuck. Lotto, Lotto is my, but she my is, favorite. She is one of my rapper. favorite reapers. Yeah, right. I ain't gonna go lie. That that album that she dropped, I put on King to that album, bro. Yeah, no, that that, that sunshine that sunshine record she did with uh, Lil yeah. Wayne and who was it Travis Gambino? That yeah, shit was. So. That shit is. That's the one. Hey, Atlanta bro. really turning up though. Like for real. I mean, one of oh, they. I gotta put not Twenty One Savage though. on my recent. Like, bro. <laughs> I, I I personally like Twenty One Savage over Lil Baby in Atlanta, but I understand Lil Baby bigger though. So being from Atlanta, how do you feel about the whole YSL and Diamond case with all that? You think those get out think those, all the topics, nigga? Yeah, oh God. Do you think those boys get out anytime soon? Chat, bro? We gonna chat, nigga. Oh God, nigga. Um, <laughs> based on public information, like uh, I don't know. So okay. yeah, hopefully, you know. Like, cause they're doing good things for the community. Like right. Young Thug purchased a property in it in Georgia, where he mm-hmm. was gonna build up like a town and stuff like that. So, um, they're doing good things for the community. Right. Um, so hopefully, but you know, the justice system is gonna justice system. You don't so. think they did anything <laughs> that you know, <laughs> anything fishy or criminal or? I mean, everybody does it. something. Like people drive with they they they. They seatbelt not on. They speed. Everybody breaking the law in some form or fashion. I just don't know the extent everybody else. Do, bro. You compared you compared a Rico case to a nigga. Not- <laughs> Come on, bro. Let's keep it a buck, bro. Let's keep it a buck, ass. Like, do I think they did something? I don't know. Like, or I do, you, do you at least think that like someone in YSL did something that they shouldn't have done? And that compromise, Young Thug and Gunna. Now they have to take the blame for it because oh, yeah, they're, they're associated gonna, with like, it. Like they're gonna try to make examples, like out of people for sure. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if like mm-hmm. Young Thug was out here being Jimmy Hoffa, like so. Oh no, no, I don't think he was the, I, the I, main I one doing it. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. But then what happens though is a lot of people got to understand like when you come from certain places, you pay money to keep your friends out of trouble. He literally paid Lil Baby to get him out the street. Come to the studio, get out the street. Like so, if I had homeboy, I have homeboys that have no motivation, like to do anything positive. Sometimes you pay to keep them away from that stuff, and they still like frolic in those activities. And when mm-hmm. they do, that becomes attached to your name. If I buy my homie an apartment, and I'm paying his rent, and he just wants some extra bread that I'm not giving him, he might start trapping out the. You know what I'm saying? That place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now you trapping out of a place that got my name on a lease. What that look like on me? Yeah. So there's those type of situations. And if somebody wants to try to tie you to that, it is what it yeah. is. But at, you're trying to save your community at the end of the day. I so, understand that. I understand I get that. It too. Yeah. Because I, I personally, you, I wouldn't yeah. understand why like, like Thug being at the position he is in, the, in his career right now, like mm-hmm. why would he put himself in the position... I like wouldn't understand that. It just doesn't make sense. Like he's already making so much money. There's no reason for him to be engaging in criminal activity to make like fucking mm-hmm. extra income or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So it would make sense that like someone's doing some shit that obviously has his name tied to it. And then most he's most of it. those Rico cases are from like way older. <clears throat> yeah, because they said it was like a 10 year investigation. Like, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Well, people got to understand in Atlanta is like well in any city like. Things just don't stop because you got popping, right? I could, mm-hmm. if somebody do something to my my people, right. my people did something back to them while I'm blowing up in rap, and that that thing is still going on. It's still, like, I just can't say, "Yup, oh, y'all by yourself," because then they gonna look at me like, "That's yeah, true." We was doing this behind, yeah, keeping you out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean. He's, he's like the breadwinner, so he kind of has yeah. to keep that integrity there, you know what I'm saying? Like, remember yeah. where you came from type shit. And I think yeah. a lot of people, like, they don't understand, like, artists, they live in regular lives, too. Their life didn't change to them. 
Mm -hmm. life was the same the whole time. We see them like, oh, young drug, young young thug dropped the song, can't have no chains on. Six months later, he got six chains on. A couple months later, he got a big house. That's all we see. But the whole time, he felt like his life was the same. He had yeah. a little bit more money. But like the things that were going on around him was like all the same. So yeah, and it probably got worse yeah. <laughs> because of that fame. It probably got more intensified for sure. Yeah. Right. Um, Where y'all from? I'm from Seattle. So Seattle. I am from. I know. I know. Fucking Omar and likes to say, "Oh, you're from like five different states." I was, <laughs> I was born and raised in California, and yeah. I to be exact. Uh, I moved to Texas in 2018. Uh -huh. um, I currently live in Austin right now. Okay, yeah, that's what's up. I'm, so, I'm supposed to be out in Austin soon, so. Link okay. Okay. Yo yo, facts. Yo yo, is that like a battle rapper too? Oh something? no, he uh he a YouTube animator. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay, I see you doing your thing. Okay, okay. How was um, Anaheim though? Came out there with the rich Californians, you know. What I mean? Man, <laughs> it's it's not that rich. I say Anaheim <laughs> Hills is probably like the the rich part, but Anaheim is like. It's cool. It's diverse. It's um. It's definitely not L.A. L.A. is a bunch of fake ass niggas. So, yeah, Orange LA. County. Orange County is a lot more chill than most parts of California. Yeah, way more chill, yeah, bro. Way more chill. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like uh, politics out there in Anaheim, like gang politics or not. Nah, that's more so like Compton Inglewood. Yeah, that's more Long LA. Beach. Yeah, Long Beach, Compton Inglewood. Yeah, I mean, there's there's politics almost like everywhere you go, but like it's more prominent in L.A. because. Yeah. yeah, niggas be in LA and they don't really be in Anaheim. They be in Anaheim, but like yeah. LA County and Orange County is two, two separate <laughs> things. <laughs> but that traffic right. out there nasty, boy. Man, the 91 freeway go crazy. I go <laughs> live, bro. That shit is wild, bro. I, I saw a video of like an airplane crashing on like a. a yeah, I actually, I actually seen that shit the other day too. I'm was... like, bro, what is going on? And then he got that car crash that happened in Brea. Yeah, where he killed all those those people. That man, the crazy. the car that was like zooming and mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yep, man, I'm just happy I'm not there right now. Cause shit, oh shit yeah. the gas gas prices go crazy too. I ain't going on. <laughs> how how you like Texas? Um, the first year I came here, I I didn't really like the idea of being in a southern state because all I really knew was like the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that, I know that sounds harsh, you know what I'm saying, but I was mostly in like a state, born and raised there, where it's like everyone's like, it's it's a different vibe. It's not really on mm -hmm. some like separatist. Uh, I, I experienced racism a lot more in Texas. Oh yeah, for sure. The four years that I've been here compared to Cali, so uh, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was it was it was it was a, it was an adjustment period for sure. You know what I'm saying. Uh, What's the, what do you think the most like racist thing that happened to you was? So there was one time I was trying to check into a hotel and this guy walked in and he had a Confederate jacket. Not a flag, like a jacket. That's crazy. And he walked in <laughs> and, then he, and then he looked at me and was like, what you doing here, boy? <laughs> and, I, and the old war dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he might, he might have did something that day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My boss was right next to me, so it's like I don't want to like risk this shit, but yeah. I just ignored it and I went upstairs. But that was probably the worst that I could think of. Um, yeah, he had a whole Confederate jacket on. I'm like, where the fuck do you buy this shit? That's yeah. insane. <laughs> so it's like niggas. <laughs> Niggas are just bold out here, but yeah, I know it's like probably worse in Mississippi and Missouri and Tennessee and yeah, yeah, the dirty, dirty yeah, South. Tennessee, not that bad. Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Memphis, uh, not that bad. I feel like yeah, hey, well, okay, I, on the weekend, Tennessee, not that bad. Yeah, I don't yeah. know during the week. <laughs> during the week. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've Why been out there that? during. Well, Why because I went, like, I used to go on the weekends because, like, Gatlinburg, Tennessee is, like, two and a half hours from, like, where my parents live. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we used to go up there on the weekend. But one time, like, when I was able to quit working, I went up there during the week. And I was like, this looks a little different. Like, mm. because there's, there's no black people, none. Right? Yeah. 
people yeah. looked look, looked at you a little bit differently than on the way. I'm like, I don't know about this. Yeah. But yeah. then like that Friday hit, and I seen like black people start to come. I was like, all right, we, 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 <laughs> we, a, little, we a little safe. Yeah. <laughs> we a little safe. <laughs> It's crazy, bro. Yeah, it was just an adjustment period moving to the South. It's being born and raised in Cali and coming to Texas. Yeah, like, I came here when I was, like, 18. So, mm-hmm. basically, my whole life was in Cali. Then when I became an adult, I moved here. So, Do you go down to uh, Florida often or, or no? I used to go to Florida every summer. And then, What's like, your- when I started YouTube, I used to be in Florida, like, two times a month. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. flights is, like, $60. So... Mm. I went to ta- I've been to Tampa International Airport at least like 20 times. Right? Yeah, family there? <laughs> uh no, nah, at the time it was uh somebody I was trying to help get started on YouTube. So I was flying down there to help them. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So a lot of people from Atlanta, like they they always talk shit about like, you know, content creators, like they're moving to LA, they're moving to New York and all mm-hmm. that. Like, what do, what is because I never understood, I've never been to Atlanta. What is what makes so Atlanta special, especially for creating content? Well, for black people, this is like black excellence. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, especially for black people. Yeah, yeah, it's like everybody just do that. I would agree. Like you got the people who like stunt. You know what I'm saying? But it's just it was a cheaper place um, that has a lot of black history. Like a lot of people come to Texas or Atlanta, and it just has like a lot of black history in it. Um, the culture, like I think, like. Hip hop was kind of being ran by Atlanta for a segment of time. Like the nice. future, dang, should I have put future in my for segment? a long time, really? <laughs> for a really long, long time. Yeah. yeah. So I would argue that, up until like New York Drill started taking over, it was it was straight Atlanta. Yeah. Honestly. Mm-hmm. But who I have to give all the credit to in Atlanta is the strippers, bro. The strippers do everything, all right? All you ain't lying. In Atlanta, <laughs> I, I thought this nigga was gonna say little baby, bro. No, no. <laughs> The reason all the rappers come out here and get popping is because them girls is out here one cheek, two cheek, both cheek. Right? Hey, that's so, a fact, like, though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> oh man, like, the me, music, me and uh, me and King been to a couple strip clubs in Florida. We know how they really? get down over there. So yeah, oh, I can just imagine Atlanta. Oh, Home to Atlanta, bro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we can go check that to, shit out, man. I was spoiled. I, I did Atlanta strip clubs. I went to. I went to the DR Winter Strip Club, ended up being oh a role. Oh my god. We gotta talk about the DR. I'm not oh, gonna I need to go to the DR, bro. Yeah, because niggas been thinking about going. Man. What's going on in the DR? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying okay. to go to that barbershop. That's what I'm trying to go. They got a barbershop down there? That barbershop in the DR with all the girls twerking and shit. Why you gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen that shit on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard about I see that. <laughs> I would have went there, no cap. But um man, uh, so I went to the strip. Miami is I Miami yeah. is more like show. Like mm. I think that's the difference between like I agree with black you. culture strip clubs yeah. or Atlanta strip clubs and like uh rich strip clubs. Mm-hmm. It's because like 11 and G5 and they look good, but like Club 11, yeah. it fun you tell this nigga like, king about Club 11. We had nah, a lot 11, of 11, it goes down to 11, bro. 11, bro. Back, yeah. it goes but down it, it looks very nice, but like, did mm-hmm. I have fun? No, Probably in there. like, but in Atlanta, like Magic, Strokers, Diamond, uh, Aurora, like you go to them and you, the only strip club that was not fun is Onyx, because man, Bro, I, I, that's the one strip club I always hear. Well, like it's, for good reasons. Right? Yeah, it, it is popping. It, it is popping, but you get searched like five times before you get inside. So my experience was already like, ah, I'm straight. They be shooting in there or what? Um, Dealing? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? They be searching a lot though. Like, what's the What's the big What's the big hype with Linux Mall? I hear people talk about that place. Mm. What's like the big like What's the draw to that place? What, what you hear about it? I don't know. I just hear it's like, oh, let's go like Linux. I'm gonna go shop like, at Linux. Yeah, I'm gonna go shop at Linux. Like it's just, I'm always hearing, it. <laughs> I'm always hearing niggas talk about Linux Mall, bro. Linux was really built off of like high fashion, right? So you got like instead of like Dillers and Macy's, you got like. Bloomingdale's and stuff, little higher end like stores, okay. but where people really shop at, like the real rich people, mm. is Phipps Plaza, which is across the street. They got like Tom Ford, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. The rich people really be across the street, but their name is attached. Like, so people Linux. think it's Linux that they're, oh, I'll go see famous people in Linux. You'll see like medium famous people that is their first time in Atlanta, 
then they realize they need to go to Phipps Plaza. And yeah. Then, yeah. So I heard there's a lot of crime that happens around that area too. Like I mean, it's a lot of money street. there. Like during COVID, yeah. it's because like a lot of people weren't um from Atlanta. So during COVID, when all the other cities shut down, yeah, it was open. All right. Mm. And so people who got money in other cities that couldn't get money there no more came here. And they had to find people who also had money to do the same thing they did home. That's why all them shootings that happened at Linux, none of them people were from Atlanta. It was mm. just yeah, that's what I figured. I mix. figured that, yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Mm. That's what is, I, I really want to visit Atlanta one day, man. I gotta go check that place to. out. Yeah. Yeah, just, just show me the, the right part of Atlanta to go to. I feel like there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of uh, uh, it, okay. Is is the conception of like is there a misconception about Atlanta? Like yes. as far as like Okay, what's what are the biggest misconceptions of you? The misconception of Atlanta is you can find anything you want to do. If you want to go sit at a park and have fun, you could do that. If you want to go to a club that don't cost twelve hundred dollars for a section, you could do that. If you want to go to like a more like intimate style club, but like people is in there to have fun, go home with people. There's clubs for that. Y'all got cheap like, gas. Uh, our, our joint like three fifty. Okay, it's like the same. Yeah. So you can do anything in Atlanta, but like if you hear about Atlanta, you'll hear like, oh, it's expensive. It's those are from people who are tourists or don't go outside. Right. Like that. If you look at the internet, you would think it costs a lot. Like you could have a lit weekend in Atlanta, like four hundred dollars. Like go uh, out, drink four hundred dollars. $100? Well, not a weekend, a weekend day. I like, was so gonna say a whole a weekend. I'm about to if say, you went out on a Friday, <laughs> yeah, on like on some date night, like uh, let's go get lit in Atlanta real quick. Right. You could find a lounge where your hookah probably like $30, your food probably like 20, 15, 20 dollars a plate. You okay. know what I'm saying? You get like two or three drinks, ten dollars each, you know what I'm saying? And then you could still go. To like a, they got like dance clubs out here, five dollar entry, five dollar drinks. You know what I'm saying? It's stuff that you just have to know. Okay. People. Okay. Yeah. So you could spend a hundred dollars. What if I don't know like people a, though? A, a yeah. Night to remember. Yeah. What if I don't know niggas? That's how people end up going to like. Uh, we had this place called Oak. You go to Oak, seven hundred dollars for a section. You get six people in. You get two bottles. That's not bad. You, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. But like the, everything's so artificial there. The people you gonna meet in those places are mm -hmm. people who are waiting on. Oh, this nigga word you got a got a, a a YouTube channel. I'm about to lock him down. <laughs> it's them. You don't. They they're not fun. Yeah. Like they're they're there to catch niggas. That it's like more working. so for like networking and shit like that. Niggas is a yeah. lot of networking. Okay. If you want to have fun, that's not where you go. Okay. So, yeah. I feel that. That's, why. That's interesting. Yeah, I wanna I wanna go visit Atlanta, man. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about it. It's a lot of hype around that area. So yeah. it's way safer than people say. Now, yeah. Edgewood, if you park your car there, you're done. But yeah. other on than bricks. that, <laughs> you're, <on bricks>. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. Like I've never got my car broken into. Let me let me knock on wood. My car's never been broken. Also, I drive a fishbowl fishbowl Toyota, so nobody got a break in my shit anyway. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Nigga, if I was super rich, I'd be driving a damn Prius or fucking Tesla. Oh, oh God. Fact, That's my next car is a Tesla for sure. Yeah. Tesla's yeah. nice. Oh, uh, shit. Seattle, though? Seattle. Seattle uh, okay. So, like, it's uh, originally, like, I would say, like, in the early to early to mid 2000s, like, Seattle had, like, a lot of culture and it was, it was thriving. You feel me? There's a lot more, like, people of color and shit, but, like, mm -hmm. As of recently, it's been getting really gentrified. We got a lot of uh, yuppies coming in. You feel me? Building their little yogurt shops and shit like that. But like, it's it's still there's still places you can go within the Northwest where you can find a, like a lot of like communities with people of color and shit like that. But yeah, it's uh it's getting really expensive and it's low key turning into like the Bay. No cap. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not gonna hold you. That's tough. I'll make it I, still, I, I still like living here though. It's it's not bad. So I actually just moved back. I was in the military for about uh four years. So it I'm rained just, a lot up there. Oh yeah, especially like around the winter, fall. Yeah. Mm. It be do it snow or it get cold for like a week, like uh every year. It'll snow for like a week, but that's about it. Hollow, where do you see yourself three to five years from now? Um, I see myself. 
with a backyard. You know what I'm saying? Probably got like a garden or something with a girl, you know, or I might have like either I'm going to have the whorehouse or I'm having one girl. <laughs> either girls are coming to my crib after work to smoke hookah and drink, or I'm gonna have one girl. This nigga yeah, on his Andrew Tate friends. shit. Oh god, Andrew Tate. No, 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 I'm not like on some fun. I really be friends with females, bro. Like I have real female friends. Like that just be chill. So like Man. So I'll, maybe not a whorehouse. A whore how do you feel about how, how do you <laughs> how do you feel about Andrew Tate? He's lying, bro. He's cap. The dudes like him. The reason why he Thank don't let you. his girl go out okay. is because his girl's getting smacked on. Thank because you. he 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 locked his girl in a cage, bro. And they come when girls come around like me and my homeboy. They feel alive. They feel like they can live. Mm -hmm. And then she don't. That's why he don't let her out the crib for sure. Okay. <laughs> Does Andrew Tate have a girl? Oh, he, he, he has like he eight says girls, he has bro. girls. Yeah, wow. but they can't do nothing. So I heard that nigga make a grooming com comment. That shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the eighteen year old shit. Eighteen yeah. shit. I'm like, bro, the man's done. Yeah. He's finished. I feel like the majority of his shit is truly like a persona, though. Like I've, I, I really don't think he believes in forty percent of the shit he says. Yeah, he do it for money for sure. A lot of them. Yeah. Do. yeah. It's that red a lot pill of them just want to be in love, bro. They just be capped. They be hurt. Like, they be simps or, like, cornballs in real life. So How do you feel about um, Sneeko and what he's been doing recently? Mm. Sneeko is another one. Like, I, 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 I've, I've met Sneeko. Sneeko is cool to me in person. But, like, his ideology just isn't going to fit, like, where he wants to – who he wants to – he want to be in love, bro. Everybody he, wants to be in love. Do you feel a lot of this shit like he's been going on recently? It's a lot of trauma from his relationship because I know he said he was doing like some type of open relationship shit. And no, I, I think don't it's know. trauma from his childhood because if you listen, he was like, I was the corny Asian kid in class and got picked on. And you probably seen like them New York niggas smacking on all the girls that was fly dressing at school. And you nice. thought like that's how you become materialistic. That's how they got the girls. They didn't get the girls because they was fly. They got the girls because they were confident. It just happened that they was fly and confident. Like, mm -hmm. but there was dudes like me. I wore basketball shorts in school every day. I had the same. I mean, me too. I, I, I saved myself for marriage, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> man, that's what's up, man. This that's crazy. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Buddy, where, where to tell the people where to find you? Big, big holler. You know what I'm saying? Big holler on YouTube. Holler at crazy on all social media platforms. Um. I don't link my OF link, but y'all could try to find it. If I want. So, that's crazy. That's I wouldn't even knock you if you had OnlyFans nowadays because shit, shit getting crazy. Shit hey, getting man, tough. the bag there, all right? The bag so, is definitely there. Might not be for niggas okay. as much, but <laughs> it's there. If, if Tiger can do it, I'm pretty sure I could. Would you ever manage uh, OnlyFans girls if you ever got the opportunity to? Uh, I think, yeah, I think I could. Yeah. I actually I got my I got for the first time I've been uh asked to be somebody sugar baby so mm, well, that's a come on mm. go get that bag You're my boy the big and hollow I see you <laughs> get that bag my boy see you, pimp? okay <laughs> life really lit when people just be out here living though but y'all got to come to Atlanta for sure most definitely yeah I definitely got to come to Atlanta bro yeah.